Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show, and we're here for another one for you. Show, what's good? What's happening, my friend? Oh, not much going on in my world. Um, just trying to uh, survive these last few days of October. Um, <clears throat> got my little uh, personal challenge that I'm doing. Uh, trying to run every day for an entire month. Of course, I do pick a month that has 31 days, so go figure. Just a few more days and you're good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, as an added benefit, though, I didn't realize it, but I'm going to hit uh, either on the final day or the day before. I think I'm going to hit 100 miles for the month. Good so, deal. That's um, damn good. Yeah. Um, what was it, Sunday? I did eight. My legs were dead yesterday, so today's kind of a shakeout day. I feel a little bit better, so I'll get at least two in, if not three. And then, how depending on how I feel today, uh, I'm just going to pack it all in, as many as I can get in on um, <clears throat> tomorrow. And I'll finish the day with a lighter run on the final day, if all goes well. I On just, Halloween. I, I'm grateful because uh, at my advanced age, <laughs> uh, I actually ran this many days consecutively without any injuries or, you know, major problems. So I'm, I'm good with that. I feel good That's about it. That's always a blessing. Yes, it is. Amen. So um, real quick before we get started, I do want to uh, tell everybody, hey, um, we normally do our true crime stuff uh, at the end of every month, but because uh, this month and next month we are doing some Game of Thrones stuff, I want to let you guys know that we haven't forsaken true crime. We will definitely get back to it once we wrap up the uh, Game of Thrones episodes. But that being said, today we are talking about... Uh, Season eight, episode two. So we're talking about the final season of Game of Thrones, Big Show. And if I'm correct, what was the name of that episode? Um, uh, something knight... of the Seven Kingdoms. A Night in the Seven Kingdoms, something like that. A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, yes. There you now, go. Hey, this episode took place in Winterfell, period. There was no other place that they went back to or back and forth to this all took place in one one spot um and i guess everybody's getting ready for the big battle uh one of the things i i took away from it uh cersei not cersei excuse me um sansa sansa and um uh, daenerys uh debated on you know whether what they were going to do with jamie and they did end up letting him fight alongside them. Uh, they, ha they had a little push from Brienne. She vouched for him. Um, I, I guess Brienne at that point was still, still kind of, you know, low key holding a little torch for him. Um, but she vouched she's, for him. She's in love with him. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll always have that torch. And, I mean, let's face it, he was going to fight whether they said he could or not unless they killed him right there. Yeah, because with what they know they're up against, yeah, they the need every thing, man they can get. You know, that's exactly what John said, so. Yeah. Um, now, um, what was it? Uh, Arya was, uh, talked to the Hound and... Uh, Asked him why he came north, uh, since he's only ever fought for himself. And uh, what was that he said? As his reason again? Do you remember? Uh, no, the only interaction I that I um, was when they were up there talking and. Then the blind, the blind, the dude with the one eye came up and they started drinking. 
I really wasn't paying attention to it <clears throat> that mm. that big. To me, it wasn't that big of a storyline. <clears throat> Excuse me, but yeah, I guess the um, big I thing though was uh, I guess Daenerys did uh, visit John, and he did tell her uh, his um, family history. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, that he's the rightful heir. Pretty much. But yeah, that was that was the end of the episode. <clears throat> that was the very end of it. Yeah. Um, and then it went from there to the army of the dead breaking the the tree line there at the uh at the very end right before the credits rolled. Yeah. But it I, basically I... to sum it up, mm -hmm. I mean basically the whole episode was you know, this is our last night on earth. Let's make the best of it type of thing. Nobody thinks they're going to survive. Yeah. Uh, you know, even Jamie, when he was talking to, uh, in, you know, talking with Bran uh, in the, at, in the forest or whatever, uh, you know, he said, so what happens afterwards? And Bran looked at him and says, what makes you think there's an afterwards? <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's just so everybody really much think. I mean, even though Bran knows exactly what's going to happen, I mean, obviously he knows he's the Third Eye Raven. Uh, but you know, some of the cool things. Um, what's his name? Came back from the Iron Islands. Theon. Yeah, came back, and so he got permission from Sansa. He wanted to defend Winterfell because he took it from Bran. And uh, he's gonna he's gonna protect Bran in the in the forest. He volunteered for that. Jamie is volunteering to fight beside Bran um, out on the field. Um, yeah, uh, I like the little the little uh, uh, the little girl that you know reminded the Onion Knight of Stannis's daughter. Because yes. she had the the burn face, and she was like, you know, my brothers were were soldiers, so I want to fight. And then Gilly basically said, you know, we're all going to be down in the crypt. You know, we sure would be safer with you down there. And she was like, well, that's my job. Then I'll protect the crypt then, or something. You know, so I, just the little nuances of everybody getting ready. It was a great. It was a very well put together episode on getting set up for, you know, where everybody believes is the end of their life. Yeah, it seemed like everybody had a moment, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, Daenerys and, and Sansa, they, uh, they're at odds because Sansa basically said, you know, if we win, if you get the throne back from Cersei, what happens with the North? You know, because we fought to take the North back and we said we'll never bend our knee again. So she basically drawn her line in the sand, that, like, no matter what happens, Winterfell's not going to bow, kowtow to you. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some underlying currents of... of oh, yeah, there, uh, there's some definite tension there. Tension in there, yes, definitely. That's what I was looking for. But altogether, it was a pretty decent episode. Uh, Aya, she popped a cherry with Gendry. Yeah, um, I, I started thinking about what you said uh, last week, and you're right. It's like, it, it, it's it was odd seeing that now it's like that's a little girl still yeah damn but it she's an again, assassin though but again you get it i mean because gendry's a boy as well he's not supposed even though he's a man in real life and that he's technically in the story he's not 20 yet so True. um he's still a young kid as well but you know i you know her point point was like you know we're gonna die tonight i want to know what it's like to to be with a guy, so hey, teach its own. Even though she was going to diss him later, but hey, that's that's a, that's another story for another time. And then uh, another big thing: Jamie made Brienne a knight. That's right. That's right. He did. I forgot he had that authority. Yeah, Even though any really... knight can make another knight. Yeah. So, so uh, she uh... she got her dream come true because that's what she always wanted. Yes. And, and um, Tyrion 
Tyrion is on odds with Daenerys. She's mad at him because Cersei didn't bring her army like he said she would and all that good stuff. So, but, you know, but you knew that she was going, you know, backstab everybody. We knew that. Yeah. We but knew that. Daener Daenerys is like, you know, you should have known that she wasn't going to do it. You told me she would be coming. Yeah. Type of thing. So, because Daenerys doesn't know any better. But all in all, I'd give this episode a, a solid A for setup. And I know what's happening in the next episode. So it was a great setup, you know, for what's coming next. I would agree with that. Uh, definitely an A. Uh, it, uh, at this point, the series was going along quite well. The season was going along quite well. And we will definitely speak on episode three uh, next week and get our takes on uh, how we see it going as a whole. I really did dig this episode. You didn't have to have a lot of action because I don't want to say it was the quiet before the storm. Uh, I want to go back to what we said earlier. Everybody had their was. moment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but everybody had their moment, and you still had some tension building up in different ways, different facets. Um, so you could see that if certain people survive, certain things were going to go their way. Uh, and and you, you're right. That's a big if because, like Brand said, who said you were going to make it out? <clears throat> yeah, I said there was going to be an afterwards. Absolutely. Um, do you have a favorite uh, <clears throat> spot in this episode? I have a couple. Um, and it's it's mostly and it's just because I go back to when we first started talking about the whole series, how my favorite character is Sansa. She is such a fierce character right now at this point of the series. Like she is... She rivals Cersei in her fierceness and cunningness, the way she thinks. Um, and granted, she had some pretty good teachers with uh, Peter Baelish and, and Cersei. Yeah. But, you know, I like the fact how she basically put her foot down to, to, to Daenerys and was like, I don't care if you're fucking my brother or not. <laughs> I'm not, we're not kneeling to you, you know. You know, I, I can't disagree because with what Sansa you're and them don't know about him being a Targaryen yet. Right. Um she certainly had been through hell and back to get where she was. So not only did she learn a lot, she went through a lot. So Right. We're which makes her probably the strongest character in my book out of the entire cast. Cersei was always weak. She was always power hungry. Yeah. You know, uh, Jamie was always weak because he only cared for Cersei. Now, granted, he's grown a little bit these last few seasons. Um, you know, Aya is a close second with how far she's come. And see, that, but that was my pick but, initially. But... But she's always been that fierce spirit. There never was a time when she wasn't. I, I agree just, with you there. I just think that her she's her a arrival spirit, her arrival to get there was a little different. I think she got more than she bargained for uh, in her wanting to be where she was at. Um. Yeah, but she wasn't violated mentally and physically, no. and no, no. You know, so, uh, and she hands down, compared, Sansa went through more. Sansa did yeah, go through more, which is which is why I think she's overall the toughest character. I'd say my three favorites would be Tyrion, Sansa, and Aya. Yeah, yeah, definitely Tyrion. Hey, Tyrion went through a lot too. Um, he did. I mean. He started off ridiculed. I mean, he obviously born ridiculed. So he's had a lot to deal with for life. Um, I guess what put me off about Sansa 
was the beginning. She just seemed like a spoiled little girl. Um, spoiled or scared? I wouldn't even say scared yet. She didn't get and scared also... until things went wrong. I mean, she I, and nothing to take away from her because for the time period of th that she was in, she was trained to be a young lady. She nothing less, nothing more. And then it all went south. So yeah, that's why I say she had to endure a lot. And I, I just didn't I, like her at the beginning. And I'm not stepping on your toes or anything, but for, you're you're coming from a POV of only being a, a boy dad. True, very true. You know, very true. Uh, you know, daughters. She, I didn't see her being like spoiled or anything like that. Just because. That's what young girls do. They dream about marrying a prince, you know. And just mm -hmm. imagine at that time, you know, a young girl would be where boys are wanting to be knights and fight, you know. The yeah. girls are wanting to marry the princess. So that's how she was. She was just a super duper girly girl. You know that saying that God will not give you any more than you can handle? My guy, I am not going to lie to you. If I had a girl, Every boy between the ages of 13 and 16 would be dead in this city. Nah. Nah, you say that. You say that. I, I, having, a, having a daughter changes you as a man. It, it, it changes you. There is nothing. There is, it is so different than being a boy dad. It, it just is. It just, you know exactly you're protecting that thing for the rest of your life. There's not a point in your life with your son. There's a point where they get old enough and you got, you got this, I got your back, but you got this, you're protecting yeah. yourself. Yeah. There's never a time with your daughter until you give her hand to another man that, and even then you're still worrying a little bit, but for the most part, when they're married, you don't, you know, um, so I get, I mean, so I understand yeah. that perspective when it came to her being that way, but and yeah, boys that, are not as boys aren't as bad as you think they are at that age. It's the girls you got to deal with. Uh, well, the cattiness. Yeah. It, it's it's the girls with the why doesn't she like me? She's such a nah, nah, nah. and she said this and yeah yeah that cattiness crap. I can mm -hmm. deal with the boy issues all the time. But <laughs> it's that catty girl crap that gets on my nerves. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's an aspect that I will never ever have. Uh, yep. Because there won't be any more children in the Kearney household. I, I guarantee you that. Um, <laughs> I guarantee. Let me put it this way. You retired, my, huh? My doctor guaranteed that. <laughs> well, you know, funny story. When I married Susan, she had the boys. A year after we were married, she was pregnant with Caitlin. Caitlin was seven and we decided we didn't want any more children. So I went and got a vasectomy. Mm -hmm. Seven years later, my wife is pregnant with Lexi. So but let she's, me ask you she's this. post vasectomy pregnant. See, because I've had it too, but did you get it tied off or did you get it clipped and burned? I went they cut to snip it. and burn. They cut it. It grew back. Damn. Don't scare me like that, brother. It, it grew back. Don't scare me like that. That's what the doctor like said. That's what the doctor said. Oh. Now, now when I went through my cancer, obviously that, that hit it right in the old chops where I'm 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 pretty non potent anymore, but because all the radiation. But yeah. uh before that, you know, yeah, it grew back. I, I never I, forget Susan called me and said she was pregnant. I was like, by who, babe? Did you forget? <laughs> by who? And she was like, I swear. Then I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna accuse you. I'm gonna go to the doctor and I'm gonna talk. And we're gonna see, but if he says I'm 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 not, <laughs> you about yeah. to set this lion free onto the jungle. <laughs> when I went there, oh. the doctor said, "Well, he said, Mister Pulley, you are still shooting bullets." Hey, and he goes, go. he goes, but let me make this let me make this right for you. So we're gonna do pay child support. We're gonna do put my kid <laughs> through college. What? Uh, unfortunately, you and I will probably be swapping chemo stories uh, soon. Uh, that's another story for another time, and I'll get with you, you know, later on on that. Uh, back to wrap up the Game of Thrones thing, though. 
it, it was an exciting episode for it not to be any action. Um, because it was very well written, very yes, well thank acted. You. That's, that's what I was look, looking for. Well written and well acted. So I was very satisfied with it as well. Can't wait to talk about episode three next week. Um, that's going to be a doozy. Let me tell you what we're going to get into as we close up, though. Okay. The National Football League. Let's go over some things here, Ryan. Dun, 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 dun. Let me see if I can get that up here for you so you can see what I see. Um, we had an interesting week eight. You, my friend, won 11 games, lost four. Ricky, 13 wins, lost two. Let me tell you what I hate. I hate that you went with the Dolphins last week. And, and I remember your words. If Tua starts, I'm going with the Dolphins. Tua starting. Lord, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Oh, sure. It, it was so close. He should. They should have won that game. They, they, they were actually have. ahead till the very end. Yeah, that is also true. Um, the one we there's two that we didn't see coming. The Browns actually put up a fight. Jameis yeah. Win, Jameis Winston, he wants a starting job in the National Football League. He no picks. It. That man is synonymous with interceptions. Had no picks. He now, granted, he should have had been picked off with less than uh, a minute left in the game but the corner uh, dropped the ball and that would have sealed the deal for the Ravens. Very next play, he decides to lob one up into the corner of the end zone and his receiver caught it ball game. Um, yes, I know the Ravens did have a couple more chances to get down the field, but they wasn't pulling off a of Washington commanders. That's another story later on. So we, we lost, we lost the Ravens game. I can see that. I think half of America Three quarters of America went for the Ravens. So there's no shame in that. Let me tell you where we should be ashamed of ourselves. Sticking with the Jets. That is the biggest dumpster fire. And I'm not mad because as a Raider fan, I can at least wipe my brow and say, whoo, there's some teams out there that suck worse than us. And the Jets are one of those teams. Um, yeah, that's yeah. another one that they let slip through their fingers. Yes, they did. And, and and I'm sitting up there watching the ticker, and I see, I'm like, New England has the ball with just like a minute left. Oh, this will be three and out. Jets will win it. Wait, why are they on the 35-yard line? What's going on here? You know. Yeah. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. You let Drake May come up in there? Well, actually, Drake May was home. Uh, but... Let me ask you this. You're it, missing it, one game on here. Am I? Because I'm missing, just going off our you're, list. You're missing the Minnesota Rams game. Which is last Thursday. The Thursday night game? Well, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't matter then because I think we both went with the Vikings. So, so yeah. since we lost that game, we're not going to count. I'm 12 and 4. You're 14 and 2. Eh, okay. Still. Um, what was my question? Oh, yeah. Is Aaron Rodgers still a, a starting quarterback in this league? Technically, yes. Should he be? No. Oh, okay. Um, in the time we have allotted left, expound on that for me. He's he sucks. He's over the hill. He's old. He 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 he's just yeah. But technically, he's their starter. So yeah, he's a starting quarterback in the National Football League. Well, he shouldn't be. Okay, let's start with the age thing, because he's following the same exact career path that his predecessor did, mm -hmm. Brett Favre. Favre was actually a year or two older when he was a Jet. And mm -hmm. was still still very productive at QB as a Jet. Mm, nah, his I didn't Jet say, years sucked. I didn't his say, Jet years sucked. That's why 
he retired again right after that year, and then Minnesota talked him out of it. So do you think that uh, Rodgers would go to another team and flourish? Because it's clearly not working in New York. Flourish? No, he's he doesn't have the right attitude. He's too selfish of a person and player to flourish anymore. I mean, he throws a bad pass. Mm -hmm. The wide receiver is not able to catch it. And he gives them a look like they're flipping stupid. It's like, you know, I'm not 18 feet tall, so how do you expect me to catch that? Or I'm not two foot tall, so why are you throwing it at my ankles? Yeah, no, nah, he's he's too selfish. He's, I mean, he's going to win some games. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, yeah he's... He's washed up. He should, he should, they should take him to the glue factory. Do me a favor. Uh, while I go through the rest of this list here, look up mm -hmm. the Jets. I would like to see their next three or four games. All right. Um, as I continue down the list, uh, we flourished. Falcons, Packers, Texans, Chargers. Easy. Uh, you did go with the Seahawks. I can see why. In the first quarter, they did put up a fight with Buffalo. But from quarter number two on, it was the Josh Allen show. Um, I saw, yeah, I, I saw I a funny meme. The Seahawks were going to be better. I saw a funny meme. It said that the Buffalo Bills have six wins. And if you add the other three teams in their division, altogether they only have six wins. And I'm like, wow, that, that that would be the Dolphins, the Jets, mm. and the uh, Patriots. All together, all of them have six wins now. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so in that division, it's going to be a bill. Mm -hmm. the, nec the next three opponents for the Jets, home against the Texans, that's Thursday night this week. That's an L. Then, then they're at the Cardinals. That's an L. And then. And then home against the Colts. It depends. Will Anthony Richardson quit because he's tired? Um, and then week 12, they have a bye. Then they're home against the Seahawks. That's a L. At the Dolphins, at the Jags, mm. home against mm. the Rams, at the Bills, home against the Dolphins. That's how their season, that's the rest of their season. I count maybe, if they're lucky, four more wins out of that. And really? that four? What I'm four gonna, are you doing? I'm going to give them one against the Dolphins. I'm going to give them the Jaguars. I give them the Jags. That's not um, it. Maybe the Colts. Uh, that's why I said if Anthony Richardson doesn't quit because he's tired. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback because um, they have Flacco as the backup. But uh, yeah. Texans lost, Cardinals lost, Colts maybe, Seahawks lost, at Dolphins lost, Jags, they'll probably lose that game because it's in Jacksonville. Uh, Rams will beat them, Bills will beat them, and their last game's at home against the Dolphins. That might be a snooze fest. So, yeah, I two, two, maybe three. Yeah. Yeah, damn. It ain't looking good if you're a Jets fan right now. I think the over under, I think the Giants end up with more wins than the Jets. So if you're if you live in New York, you might want to go with Big Blue. And I don't that's, know. They, and that's they, they almost they almost suck worse. <laughs> they in a, a different kind of way. Daniel Jones doesn't blame the rest of the team. He knows he sucks. No, the rest of the team blames Daniel Jones. <laughs> well, they should. Um, uh, Chiefs win over the Raiders, but I'm not disappointed about it because we are the youngest team or either the youngest or the second youngest in the National Football League. We, we got a lot to get together before we can compete. Uh, I, I'm just glad that the score was 27 to 20 and not 35 to three or something like that. Uh, Man, it, it, shut it, up! That that score should have been twenty-seven to thirteen. It should have. We let y'all score. We let y'all score at the end. Hey, I, and I'll take so, it too because it it looks no, better on the stat line. 
<laughs> that's the problem, though. That's that's the problem. You're giving yourself false hope. Oh no, it's not false hope at all. We we have yeah. You're saying no you're glad that's you, no. That's not what I'm saying. You're giving them credit for being only a touchdown loss when it was a two touchdown loss that they should have had. You're saying, oh, it looks better on paper. I'm, yeah, I'm, I can be a little bit proud of this team because uh, even, they even lost if it was touchdown. even if it was a two touchdown loss in the past, um, Mahomes has embarrassed the Raiders in Vegas. I mean, literally embarrassed. I mean, I go back to you know several he years hasn't back. Lost there yet? Yeah, I go back to several years back when they had that explosion in the second quarter where they scored what two or three touchdowns or four touchdowns in one quarter. And this was after we took the lead, you know, it's like, yeah, that lead's gone. That game's gone. You know, um, I think last year yeah, they, they blew it wide open in the second quarter and in the Vegas game. Yeah, we have a different offense this year, so we, yeah, we're not blowing anybody I, I, out this year. But you're not offensively. Defensively, they showed a stat with Spags. The man's defense gets better and better every year. Oh, they yeah. They allow fewer yards and fewer points every single year. Uh, numbers think, don't lie. I, I think they said the last time a team scored 30 on this defense was the Eagles in Super Bowl 56. And still lost. But I'm just saying, we've hold, we're holding teams in the 20s. Hell, nobody's reached over. We haven't given up over 27 points for like 13 games or 14 games or something like that. Now, when that Buff Buffalo game comes, and I'm not saying Buffalo will win, I think it's going to be a track meet. But mm, I expect that I don't, from Kansas City and Buffalo. I don't expect it to be a track I don't expect anybody we play going to be a track meet. Really? Nobody? We're not. No, we're not that team no more. First of all, for it to be a track meet, our defense would have to fall on its face. True. True, and I don't see that's that not, happening, so you're right. That's not going to happen. But it's it will be a it'll be a very competitive game, and that's being in Buffalo. You know, if we were, you know, if we we're able to secure the win on Monday and then I think we play Denver. I think our next two games are New Orleans, I mean, Tampa and Denver, and then we go play at the Bills. That's our third game from now. You know, that, that might be the game, our first loss of the year. Now, as we wind it down, let's go through our picks here. Um, All right. I'm going to try to be super, super diligent so that I can I, – I, I, we talked about personal records uh, at the beginning of the show. I want to see if I can go a, a perfect week. I mean, everybody okay. does, but let, let's see if Ricky can do that this week. Uh, Thursday night, Houston is at the Jets. You already know I'm going with the Texans. Same, Houston. Uh, then we have Sunday at noon. The Cowgirls are at the Falcons. This is a tough one here because, no, it's not. Who am I fooling? I'm going with the Falcons. Yeah, Falcons. Uh, Dolphins at the Bills. 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 So far, so the same. Here we go. Toilet Bowl Part 1. Raiders at the uh, Bengals. I'm going with the Bengals. Bengals. Uh, Chargers at the Browns. <sighs> Uh, I'm gonna go Chargers. Um, I think I'm gonna go Chargers as well. Uh, Patriots at the Titans, Toilet Bowl Part Two. I'm gonna go with the Patriots. I'm going with the Titans. Okay, this is our first different one of the year. I mean, of the week. Commanders at the Giants. I'm going with the Commanders. Yeah, no, easy. That's an easy dub right there. 
Saints at the Panthers. I'm going to go ahead now, and this go with one the is Saints. tricky. This one is tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I think this is a gut check moment for the Saints. I think the Panthers get their second victory of the year. Really? Okay. Both of those teams suck, man. That is true. Broncos at the Ravens. <clears throat> Ravens. Agreed. Bears at the Cardinals. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Because here's the thing. The Bears know they should have won Sunday. They know they should have won. Did you see, did you see that play with the cornerback that was taunting yeah. the crowd when he should have been yeah. back there? I did Not saying that. that he would have made a difference because he probably would have jumped up in the uh, pile with the rest of the guys instead of. Well, he no, he's the reason why they lost. He's the one that tipped the ball to the guy. So it was his hand that tipped. Okay. Yeah. Never mind then. Never mind. <clears throat> I'm going with the Bears because I, I think they got they got a reason they they got to win they they're it's just something inside them they they're gonna put up some points on the Cardinals and that defense is gonna put the clamps on the midget. Who did the Cardinals play last week? Uh, let's see here. Cardinals played. The Dolphins. Yeah. If this was in Chicago, I'd probably pick Chicago. But at Cardinals, they, they're they tougher than people give them credit for. So, all right. I'm going to go Cardinals. A little less than a minute left. Lions, Packers, I'm going to go with the Lions. Lions. Uh, Rams, Seahawks, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I'm going Rams. Okay. Colts, Vikings, I'm going with the Vikings. Vikings. And then Monday night, Tampa is at Kansas City. I'm going with KC. Kansas City. All right, there we go. That's our picks. Can't wait to see how we did next week. Game of Thrones, episode three of season eight. Show, take us out of here. Thank y'all for watching. See you next week. Hug your loved ones. Tomorrow's not promised. Later, everybody.